Easton means engineering. High performance. Style and design. Protection and speed. It really means changing the game. For more than 80 years, Easton Bell has developed innovative equipment for a wide range of sports. Football, baseball, hockey, cycling, winter sports, lacrosse. Easton Bell Sports covers all the bases. The company has a portfolio of brands, including Rydell, which started out in the 1930s making football cleats. And now, they make high-tech helmets with microsensors. Welcome to Bloomberg Enterprise, your exclusive look inside America's most interesting businesses as they scale up. Technology changes the game, uh, particularly in the equipment world. It's more so than in apparel or footwear. Easton Bell CEO, Paul Harrington. It's really about increasing the performance of the athlete by using the equipment. And we feel that we're on the cutting edge across all our brands. Is there one overarching philosophy you have when running the company? Innovation. Absolutely innovation. In our world, uh, in sporting goods equipment, innovation is the key. That plus uh, consumer insights. We serve the highest level, the alpha kid as we call them, the 15 year old that's at the highest level of where they're playing, whether it be baseball or hockey, lacrosse, um, bike or snow. So being able to bring innovative product to market is something that is, is a requirement. It's the price of entry. It's that combination of innovation with more direct marketing to the consumer that keeps us fresh. The cynic would say a baseball bat is a <laughs> baseball bat is a baseball bat. Fundamentally hasn't changed over the hundreds of years the game has been played. What makes you think that innovation is really going to make the difference? The proof's on the field. You know, we have right now, Sheila, um, what we call the hit lab. So we bring uh, a laboratory around to all our different colleges. So we have 16 of the top uh, Division I schools. Well, we'll go in with the hit lab and, and have our bats tested against the competition. And as I said earlier, with the bats that we're now introducing into the market, our power brigade, those were clear win winners across the competition within a test right on the field. So. Uh, I think, you know, from where I sit and from where engineers sit, a baseball bat's not a baseball bat. <laughs> Even your basic pitcher's cap takes on new form and functionality at Easton Bell. So what's this guy here? It looks know, like a baseball hat, but it, with the yeah, shield on yeah. it. What, what we found is, you, you've seen it in, in the papers, uh, with baseball there's a certain uh, number of times that a pitcher can get hit with a line drive, okay, coming off a bat. So we look through it and, and we have you know, certain consumers that, what's the unmet need? We're always looking, what's the unmet? We need protection for a picture, for a pitcher. The problem is that you can't have this type of helmet for a pitcher, okay? You've gotta have sight lines, you've gotta have breathability, the, the pitcher's out there for nine innings in the heat. It can't be, again, to the other point, it's gotta be protective, but it can't be an inhibitor to the, to the game. So we came up with, um, our first uh, crack at it looked like a batter's helmet. I said, this isn't gonna work, nobody's gonna wear it. And if, if nobody wears it, it's not going to accomplish the, the objective. So we took a look at uh, a fresh start, ground up design, and really just looked at the, what are the critical points that potentially a pitcher can get hit. And we simulated over 10,000 pitches um, by looking at film of where the pitcher's head ends up after his delivery is down there. And we found that 90% you know, of the hits are right here. Okay? So we, we developed this, this helmet. We introduced it in March of last year. And it's a slow adoption rate. You know, this is one of those things where people uh, will see it over time. That makes sense. You know, a long time ago, people weren't wearing hockey helmets. Uh, so if I, you know, if I for fast forward five or seven years, I believe this will be a, a significant product on the field. Innovation is a guiding principle at Easton Bell. In 2010, the company built the Dome, a cutting edge facility at which new products are developed and tested. This is where all the magic happens. This is it. We came up with this concept in January of 2009 to really get all our engineers and designers in one place to move our helmets to the next level. And have you seen that make a difference? We have. We've seen it make a difference both with getting our inline product development on a more cohesive, quicker path, but we've also seen the ability to use this facility to really focus on advanced concepts and brand drivers. So each one of our brands, uh, whether it be Bell, Giro, Easton, or Riddell, has specific product that's going to drive the brand. We want that from a helmet perspective to be produced here. This looks like some sort of crazy batting cage. <laughs> this is what we call the cannon. It's a multi-purpose testing facility where we can replicate the impact of a baseball on a pitcher's helmet, or a batter's helmet, or a hockey puck on a, on a hockey helmet. So, so it just shoots balls at this 
poor head as it's fast as it can. Head, yeah. At various different speeds and various different pressure. And one of the advantages is to be able to take with the testing facility right here, whatever learnings we have directly back into the design and engineering of the helmets. Okay, let's see how good it is. Okay. Fire it up. Oh my God. So you can actually see how hard and fast this ball actually can potentially hit someone. Right, and we can see the indentation it makes there in terms of um, as we design the helmet going forward. As Mike said, that's a single impact design. This kind of R&D is nearly 70% of the company's investment, and it pays off. Technology, innovation, some of the key driving forces for Easton Bell Sports. Have you seen it impact the bottom line, though? We've seen an impact the bottom line would be able to raise our average selling price. Technology drives rising the average selling price. It also drives how we have to work more collaboratively with our source base up front in the development process. Okay? We need to be able to talk early on when, when I described earlier about the prototype. What is that technology in there? What's the margin on it? What's the costing? Is it providing the consumer the features and benefits we're looking for? But we feel that technology obviously is an enhancer to our bottom line. When we come back, head injuries in sports, the controversy, and the cure. Everybody is absolutely focused on increasing the learnings that, that, that are a result of concussions. We do believe that there are technological advances in the helmets, and we've done that. We've rolled out new products every two years, but it's partial solutions. There's going to be, there's no one silver bullet for concussions. injuries and how to protect against them is a controversial issue in sports. Through at least five separate pending lawsuits, more than 150 retired football players have sued the NFL for turning a blind eye to the long-term effects of head injuries. Included in the suit, Easton Bell and its helmet division, Rydell. Easton Bell, along with several other companies, was recently named in a lawsuit by former retired NFL players. Do you think Easton Bell Products provides adequate protection for their players? I do believe Easton Bell Products provides adequate protection. As you're, I'm sure you're aware, I can't comment on pending litigation. But we feel that our products stand up to what we, we make our claims and for what the performance is on the field. What's your take on the state of helmet protection right now? Well, we wish we had all the answers. What I do know is that everybody is absolutely at, whether it be the NFL, college, high schools, the medical community, everybody is absolutely focused on increasing the learnings that, that, that are a result of concussions. We do believe that there are technological advances in the helmets, and we've done that. We've rolled out new products every two years um, you know, with our new 360 helmet that's introduced this year. But it's partial solutions. There's going to be, there's no one silver bullet for concussions. It's going to be a combination of advanced technology and the equipment. It's going to be looking at the rules changes like all the, all the different leagues are. And it's going to be coaching techniques. You know, understanding what a coach impact on a player and how that player is going to play the game. If you combine all three of those, then we're going to make the sport of football safer. How do you test your equipment? Mm -hmm. We test it many, many different ways. Uh, we have drop testing here that you'll see um, shortly. We have testing that looks at all the different materials within in terms of the energy absorption. So we have a robust testing process um, along with all the different certification bodies that exist within helmets. Easton Bell's football helmet improvement efforts include drop testing and prototyping various materials for energy absorption. Engineers like Mike Lowe, Easton Bell's VP of Helmet Technology, gather to create the latest in sports equipment. So basically you're going to try and crush this helmet right now. Yes. So we, what we're trying to do is manage the, or measure the amount of energy to the head. We really want the least amount of energy to the head um, you know, to protect the players. So this will get raised up, come down. We'll be able to see how well it's performing impacts. Let's see it work. This is exciting. This is kind of scary. Yeah, it comes, it's pretty, it's a lot of energy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that what this, this, the, this will graph us um, the amount of energy that goes into the head, and then we can assess that and make decisions on the foam density or the thickness of the helmet to make it uh, improve if, we, if needed. This one actually did very well. And how many poundings 
I mean, does the average helmet go through like this? Well, football helmets intended to last about 10 years. Oh, so wow. it's multiple impacts over and over, and they go through a reconditioning process to um, kind of you know, bring them back into certification, put them back on the, on the field. So these helmets have got to take a lot of those hits. Yes, yes. One of Easton Bell's innovations in head protection, helmets equipped with sensors that detect the impact of a blow. So now there are sensors actually inside this helmet. Yeah, this is our HITS technology, if you look at that, that right there, mm -hmm. uh, which that means that this helmet is equipped with sensors that are then used um, to both record the number and the severity of the, of the HITS. That, da that data is translated to the sideline, uh, where a trainer, an equipment uh, uh, person or a, or a coach can look and say, maybe we need to take that per layer out and look at a, a, side log, a sideline protocol test, run them through a concussion uh, test. So this is crazy. This is all real time. A player gets hit, a sensor goes off if it's a severe hit, and then the player gets pulled off and tested. That's correct. That's unbelievable. Yeah. We're, we're very proud of um, being a leader in this in, in terms of having it on a number of um, high-end Division I schools. Our challenge is how do we make this more accessible uh, to, to lower levels in terms of the high school and the colleges, which we're working on now. But cutting-edge protection comes at a price. These helmets cost around $1,000, as much as five times that of average helmets. So you think there could actually be more done to protect the players? I wouldn't say that. I would say that this is, an, uh, this is a situation that's evolving in terms of the knowledge that comes in. Okay? We're, we're spending more time. We have a, a system on the field with the, end, the top 12 teams in the Division I college football, which actually monitors the, both the frequency and the severity of the impacts. We use that, those learnings, it's over a million hits worth of data. We use that both to inform our product development process and our helmet design to look at the next generation helmet. So I think that we're continuing to make advances in the right categories. Do you think there could be a lot more done for the industry as a whole, whether you're talking about the players, the coaches? I think that right now what's being, what, what can be done is being done and we'll continue to learn. The challenges of running multiple brands under one roof when we come back. The competition's out there. We've got to compete with the iPad and the iPhone and, and all four dollars. But again, we feel, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't, that sport is participation in the sport enhances both the kid and society. So if we can continue to bring compelling products to the market, we think we'll win. Easton Bell Sports runs the gamut when it comes to brands. But it wasn't always that way. The company was created through a series of acquisitions, led by Boston-based private equity firm Fenway Partners. Easton Bells is your classic private equity roll-up. Take a bunch of different brands, let's mash them together, let's have a platform and then grow. Why is bigger better in this case? Well, clearly having scale helps you with both um, being able to attract talent, being able to work with your source base, okay? Uh, and being able to take your engineering talent and what we've done in the last three or four years is not just have them specialized by a sport. So if we have an engineer that's, that's specialized in helmets, you see here at the Helmet Technology Center, the Dome, being able for them to work across multiple sports and bring the learnings from one sport into another sport, um, that helps us with bigger being better. Having more products and sports to work on, one, energizes the workforce, and two, allows us to spread our expertise and reach the consumer with better and in more innovative products. So you do use the classic business term, there are synergies between football and hockey and baseball. Yeah, I would say there are. Um, I think the synergies are probably different than what, when the original deal was put together. You know, synergies in terms of locations and cost and things like that. Where we found the synergies is in that engineering, in that product development. Being able to take that expertise across more sports, that's a synergy that we're taking advantage of. And that's what allows us to grow. A roll-up is notoriously hard to manage, right? You have a lot of different businesses from a lot of different areas and histories that are now being put together under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. What's your biggest challenge in running Easton Bell Sports? It's a good question. Uh, I would say the biggest challenge is having people feel they're part of something bigger. Okay, so as like you said, when you roll companies up, the people have been within this vertical brand for, for most of their career. Can they see a bigger picture? Can they see a bigger opportunity? Okay, and also probably, you know, can they play at a higher level in terms of a global company that, that's bigger? So the biggest challenge is people. Another challenge for Easton Bell Sports? Keeping up with consumers, from where they buy the products to how much they can afford. You have a lot more of the sports big box retailers. You have a lot of specialty shops. Mm -hmm. How have you managed that changing landscape? By really looking at product segmentation. 
Right. That, that's the key to be able to satisfy different retail channels. We can't have the same product in every single channel. So we're working with the specialty retailers in terms of our highest end of the product, the price point that's up there, because that's their consumer that walks through the door. We're working with our big box retailers in terms of what's a product proposition or, a, or a, um, a series of products that we can bring into your store that's special to you. So it's a combination of product segmentation and, as I said earlier, just having the most innovative product. The consumer now is under more pressure than ever. Mm -hmm. Unemployment is still at 9, 10 percent. Mm -hmm. There's so much competition for that last dollar in the consumer's wallet. How are you winning that? Mm -hmm. We've been very resilient through, through the recession, as you've seen through our numbers. We believe that our products and our brands have a place within a consumer's disposable income that's pretty high. Okay? If you have a situation where a uh, consumer is under pressure for spending, they may cut something else. But sports is an integral part of our, of our life. It, it's what uh, brings value to both a family, you know, doing things together, going to a baseball game, going to a hockey game, uh, bike rides, snow, ski trip, all those type of things. We've seen our business hold up probably more than some of the other disposable income products that are out there because it's ingrained in both the family and in the kid. At the same time, it's also the era of iPads and iPhones yeah. and Wii's and DSLs. Mm. Yeah. Do you find kids are less apt to play sports these days? I think that's true in, in some ways. We still have a very, very strong consumer base, but with the competitions out there, we've got to compete with the iPad and the iPhone and, and all four dollars. Participation in sport enhances both the kid and society. So if we can continue to bring compelling products to the market, we think we'll win. When I think about competition in sports, there's so much of it. Yeah. Nike, Adidas, you have the big guys out there. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of the specialty brands. Mm -hmm. Easton Bell has managed to be kind of number one or two in all of your categories. Yeah. How are you going to maintain that position? Everyone is trying to get in your space. Mm -hmm. Through our talent. It's really been the talent that we have in the company that's able to produce an engineer product that makes a difference for the consumer. We, we don't take our competition lightly, and there's been people that have come into, the, into some of our categories over the last two or three years, but that's why we have places like here, the Dome. You know, that's why we're investing in R&D. That'll keep us ahead. What's next for Easton Bell Sports? More when we come back. Easton Bell Sports is slated to post nearly 7% sales growth this year and it's a rate CEO Paul Harrington sees as sustainable. What's the five-year growth rate you're targeting for the company, sales? Well, well, it's impossible to predict, as you know. We see ourselves very similar to our last two or three years. You know, we have high single-digit growth. Do you see yourself adding a lot more brands? You know, there's never a crystal ball. Uh, like I said, we've, uh, we've done some small acquisitions in, in the last couple of years, but I do see us in, in the market. Um, you know, we've, we've really worked hard on our balance sheet, so we've paid o over $150 million worth down worth of debt. So we're now in shape, as I said earlier, with those new talent that we brought into the company to look more strategically for some bigger acquisitions. We don't have one in mind right yet, but, uh, but that's something that we talk with our board about uh, regularly. There have been a lot of kind of sports that have come up under the radar. Skateboarding, some would say snowboarding. Okay. What are the kind of sectors you have your eyes on for the future? We went into lacrosse. So that was one of the fastest growing sports that's out there right now in the team sports area. There's other sports that are coming up on the fringe, but we do, we do like, we have this term in the company called maniacal focus. Okay? We need to focus down on what we do best. If there's an opportunity like lacrosse, which has that kind of customer base and that, that imprint into the sporting world, then we need to be in it. Easton Bell's next opportunity, tackling the international markets. What's your number one goal on your to-do list for the next five years? For the next five years, it's to grow internationally, uh, to have a larger footprint globally, and it's to extend our brands uh, out of just sporting goods equipment and into potentially apparel and footwear. If we can accomplish those two things, we will continue to add value for our employees, for our company, for our shareholders. What percentage of international is your business right now? Uh, it's probably about 30 to 35 percent. You know, we'd like to move that to 60, 40 over time. So now the bike in snow is starting to open up, for example, in Asia. Okay? Um, there was a, a recent quote I had from our Asian distributor for baseball that the Chinese government has recently uh, mandated that baseball is an education sport. Really? That mean, yeah. That means every high school will pay baseball in China going forward. Think of the opportunities for, for our Eastern brand there. What is the eventual exit for the company? Do you see an IPO in the future? Yeah, that's hard to predict. It's definitely one of the possibilities. If you look at our, our, the profile of our company, okay, we've had above average growth. We've had margin expansion. Um, 
we have innovative product and, and we have loyal consumers. Those type of things can lend themselves to long-term growth in an IPO world. Um, we could look to a strategic uh, acquisition or a merger. We haven't finalized on that. What I'm focused on every day with my team is building a long-term beautiful company. I feel if we do that, the rest will take care of itself. What keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night is not having the right talent in the right place to take advantage of the opportunities. And I believe that we do. Uh, I'm sleeping a lot better than when I first came here three years ago. Uh, I think that combined with the fact that um, the economic world clearly over the last two or three years has kept any CEO up at night. But in terms of um, being in a, in, a, in a sport and in a, uh, an industry that we love and the people being energized by bringing these brands together to a higher uh, goal, you know, we, have, we have a mantra, take tomorrow. What's it going to do to take tomorrow? I'm Sheila Damarajan for Bloomberg Enterprise. Thanks for watching. And be sure to check out Bloomberg TV on Facebook for exclusive content and information on upcoming episodes.